Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas packs plenty to do on board a ship that's maybe half the size of some of the mega ships that are out there. And if you're going on a cruise on Radiance of the Seas, you might be wondering what there is to do on board, what you can see and experience. And today, we've got a full walkthrough tour of Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas up next. Hey everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and today we're talking about Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas with a full walkthrough tour of this amazing ship. Radiance of the Seas was built in 2001, it's 90,000 gross tons and can accommodate about 2,100 passengers at double capacity with maybe a few hundred more if you started adding third and fourth passengers on board the ship. Radiance of the Seas does a lot of different itineraries, she'll spend her summers usually in Alaska and then in the summertime she'll move around. Maybe she'll go to Australia or the Caribbean or somewhere else in between. One of the strengths of the Radiance class, quite frankly, is its ability to be very flexible in terms of where Royal Caribbean puts it. It can do almost any itinerary because of its size. It can fit in pretty much any port that's out there. And in addition to that, it can still offer a lot to do. And when you're talking about the Radiance class, you're not going to find necessarily all those gee whiz, can't believe they put it on a cruise ship features like water slides or an ice skating rink. But that doesn't mean that it's a boring ship. The Radiance class ships have plenty to do on board, and there's actually a number of different dining venues, both specialty and included restaurants. You're also gonna find pools, whirlpools, rock climbing wall, miniature golf course, and a lot more. So today, we're gonna take a walk around Radiance of the Sea, starting, of course, with the top deck. Every time we do a cruise ship tour, we start off with the pool deck on a cruise ship, and uh, this is no different here on the Radiance of the Seas. Radiance of the Seas, as I mentioned, has pools and hot tubs available for you to use during the day. There are two decks to the pool deck, the lower deck and the upper deck. Maybe they have better names. I'm not sure, but <laughs> these are the names. You also find a large movie screen at the pool deck, which means during the day and evening, actually, they'll show different films there you can enjoy. You're also going to find plenty of lounge chairs, and also there's a towel station that you can get all your towels from. In terms of getting a chair, you know, listen, when you're on a cruise ship and it's a sea day and you're in a warm climate, not necessarily Alaska like in this video here, you might find a lot of people competing for chairs there. So it's always a good idea to get up to the pool deck a little earlier in the morning to get a spot. You'll also find the pool bar on the lower part of the pool deck here on Radiance of the Seas. And the pool bar is where you can go to grab a drink. There's also the sky bar on the upper pool deck. So either one, it's the exact same menu, just <laughs> more convenience all around. In addition, you'll find waiters that'll walk around the pool deck to serve you drinks. But here you can get, you know, any of your frozen cocktails. You can get a beer. You can get bottled water, soda. It's all available. And I love the views from the pool deck. Something really, really nice about it. And in warmer climates, obviously, it'll have that Caribbean vibe to it where you'll feel like, hey, this feels like a great holiday. And in, even in here in Alaska, it's just a nice way to kind of get outside, enjoy that fresh air, and of course, cocktail all around. You know, with Radiance of the Seas, you're also going to notice these totem pole designs here, which actually fit in really well with the Alaska motif. I'm not sure Royal Caribbean necessarily thought of that when they designed the ship that it was going to Alaska, but it's a nice touch. You're also going to find the jogging track on deck 12. The jogging track is a wraparound track that you can go walking or jogging or both on there, depending on your preferences. For a lot of people, they like to go and get a little bit of exercise, and this is where you can do it on deck 12. And you got some nice views while you're going for a run. That's probably the nice thing about going for a jog or a run on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship is oftentimes you'll have these beautiful views surrounding you as opposed to when you go running or jogging back at home. Next up is the Boardwalk Doghouse on Deck 11. Yeah, so a feature that Royal Caribbean added to the ship is a complimentary, means included with your cruise fare, hot dog spot where you can get different hot dogs customized just the way you want it. So if you like it with mustard and sauerkraut, well, then you're my best friend because that's how I like it. But if you prefer it with onions or plain or ketchup, I don't know why, but if you want to do any of these things, you can customize it the way you want it. And the doghouse is available during the daytime to enjoy. And there's no additional cost to get a hot dog here. You're also going to find seating near the doghouse that you can go to even if you're not eating at the doghouse, although it comes with a complimentary whiffs of hot dogs with that as well. Here is a ping pong table and these ping pong tables are free to use and you can enjoy a game and challenge some friends and family. Let's head into the solarium, which is the adults only pool area on Radiance of the Seas. The great thing about the solarium on Radiance is that it is totally enclosed. And what I love about this solarium, in fact, I'm going to say this is my favorite type of solarium on any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. The reason why I like it so much is I think number one, it's just the right size. Number two, it's got that totally enclosed glass enclosure on the top, which theoretically, by the way, 
that roof could open it is retractable but in practice i don't think they've ever done it in the last like decade but theoretically anyway you got these amazing padded seats in the solarium that are really comfortable to enjoy always the right temperature on there and the pool is a great size relative to the size of the solarium it's just something about it i really enjoy it's one of the few solariums i really like actually seek out to go to and, and spend time in because i think i the, the layout the flow and the amenities in here really stand out there's also the solarium bar in the solarium as well so you can get your drinks while here in fact one of my favorite spots if you're looking at the bar like in this view here behind it to the left of the bar if you're facing the bar there's some great seats that are right there you can go to and uh you don't have to go very far to get a drink also you'll find park cafe in the solarium park cafe is kind of like your well cafe promenade that you might find on other cruise ships the options here are pretty much available for breakfast lunch and even late night snacks and this is a great spot to get a quick bite to eat it's a good alternative to the wind uh, and and it offers you know a lot of good food whether it's soups or salads or cookies or pizza you're gonna find it here in the park cafe by the way while the solarium is for adults only 16 years old and above kids are allowed to come walk through the solarium number one and number two kids are allowed to come into park cafe and grab something to eat the difference is they just can't like you know hang out here and, and sit down and go to the pool and whatnot in the solarium that's reserved for adults by the way speaking of that when you're in alaska or another cold weather environment royal caribbean will actually open the solarium pool to children for certain hours of the day because of course the main pool is just too cold to go into so just something to keep in mind all right let's head on out to the sports deck so we're going to walk backwards now from the solarium on the upper pool deck to the sports deck on deck 12. this is where you'll find some of the activities that are outdoors of course here on radiance of the sea starting off with a water slide it's a kitty water slide so i don't want you to think that this is the same kind of water slide that you'll find on some of the bigger roller curving cruise ships this is really meant for kids i would say five and below I, it is a very much a juvenile water slide it is a water slide so if you got younger kids this is a nice option for them because let's face it there's not a whole lot for them to do in the pool otherwise so Royal Caribbean added this water slide in fact this was for a while the only water slide Royal Caribbean had on any of its ships but I digress you're also going to find other activities here on the sports deck starting off with the mini golf course yeah there's a mini golf course on ratings of the seas no cost by the way for the water slide or the mini golf course here just grab a club and try your luck at going down the course here how well you can do uh, my kids tend to cheat like profusely in this game they'll just you know not even count their strokes and hit their ball with their foot as much as possible but you know if you're actually trying to be competitive about this this could be a really fun activity great sea day activity and something fun to do on board the ship there's also a basketball court that you can enjoy the basketball court doubles also as a soccer court and dodgeball and a variety of other activities even pickleball from time to time so if you're looking for some fun things outside and some sporting events a lot of these are just pickup games but there can be organized events as well and it wouldn't be a real cruise ship without a rock climbing wall the rock climbing wall is another complimentary activity in which you can try your best to get to the top and ring a bell that's at the top of the course there are a couple different tracks on the rock climbing wall for you to try there's a beginner course intermediate and of course advanced you also find samba grill which is a brazilian steakhouse this is one of only two Royal Caribbean cruise ships the other being Allure of the Seas that still has a Brazilian steakhouse on board Samba Grill is an all you can eat Brazilian steakhouse so basically they keep bringing out meats and foods to you until you tell them no more no mas no mas and uh you can really enjoy a variety of different meats here and this is a different kind of experience I'm not sure if you've ever done a Brazilian steakhouse on land but this was a concept that Royal Caribbean brought out here on only a couple ships that never really made it to many other vessels in the fleet so it's kind of unique in that regard but it's especially restaurant which means it does have a cover charge to dine here it is not included in your cruise fare but if you elect to dine here well bring your stretchy pants because you're going to need it to eat at Samba Grill lots of good food to enjoy and I think for a lot of people they really enjoy the challenge of how long they can go until they flip that green card to a red card because they've just had too much food another Radiance class ships this is where you'll find Izumi but here it's actually the Brazilian Steakhouse. Challengers Arcade is where you're going to find the Kitty Arcade. I say Kitty Arcade. Let's face it. I play games here too. Nothing wrong with that. If you want to play some video games, video games do cost extra. So if your kids are like, oh my goodness, they have that game. It's going to cost extra. So start saving your pennies, kids, because uh, as a parent, I will tell you that <laughs> this goes quickly. So it's important to, uh, you know, make it worthwhile, but you'll find racing games. You'll find claw machine games. You'll find different classic arcade games. It's a fun thing to do. And for a lot of families, this can be a nice little quick diversion during their day. If you go to the back of the ship, you'll find some great viewing spots 
here on the Radiance class. I mean, really some nice viewing angle, especially when you're in Alaska. So much to see. So make sure you walk all the way to the back. There's also some seating here in the back. So if the pool deck is busy, or you want something nice to go hang out in, a little quieter, this could be a really good undiscovered spot towards the back. You also find some shuffleboard courts here where the equipment is free to use. You just have to grab it and you can try your best at that. And in addition to all that, there's even more seating and viewing angles towards the front of the ship now. And again, the nice thing about the ratings class is there's lots of nooks and crannies to the ship and a lot of different places you can go. In a place like Alaska, when you're going to Alaska, I mean, you, there's so much to see around you that getting the perfect angle is really important. So when in doubt, start walking around the upper pool decks to kind of see what's around you. And also, by the way, speaking of Alaska, you know, if you're deciding whether or not you want to get a balcony or not, if you book an inside cabin, you can feel assured that there's plenty of viewing areas from up top. All this walk has made me hungry. So let's head down to the Windjammer, which is the complimentary buffet restaurant on Radiance of the Seas. The Windjammer is available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it serves food and buffet style as much as you'd like. You can grab it here. It's available on the first day of the cruise and throughout the sailing as well. And the Windjammer is a staple. I mean, it's a buffet. It has a variety of foods. You're going to find salads, sandwiches, spaghettis, burgers, hot dogs, pizza, and a variety of other foods. The nice thing about the Windjammer is the menu selection does change daily. For lunch and dinner, the food selection will change. There will always be like staples in here, but there'll be kind of a rotating menu for lunch and dinner. Breakfast is pretty much the same every single day. The great thing about this is it is easy. It's grab and go, come in here, very casual. There's more than any kind of dress codes here. And for a lot of people, they enjoy going to the Windjammer, not only for, you know, a, a breakfast, but also for dinners as well, because again, it's more casual. And depending on your turn, maybe you're a little busy, maybe you're a little tired, a little worn out. I've been nice to go to the Windjammer and grab something to eat over here. If I can make a recommendation for the Windjammer, look for the international foods. They're fantastic. And any cooking stations that are there. Usually these cooking stations are available throughout each of the meals that the Windjammer serves. And there's a variety of different cooking styles available to you, whether it is the freshly made waffle station in the morning, or perhaps the pasta station for dinner it really adds a little more flavor and you can customize it just the way that you want it. Really stands out, I really like it quite a bit. Now, there's plenty of seating for the Windjammer inside, but my tip to you is to go outside. There's actually seating in the back of the Windjammer that's outdoors, which is absolutely phenomenal viewing. The Radiance class is one of the few classes of Royal Caribbean cruise ship that has seating in the back of the Windjammer for meals. Uh, the other being, of course, the Quantum class ships, and it's an underrated spot to enjoy your food. So. You know, you can go sit and enjoy your food inside, but my advice, take it outside and enjoy the amazing views that you have as well. Now, along the side of the Windjammer outside, you're also going to find what used to be a specialty restaurant and is now just extra seating. It used to be called uh, Rita's Cantina, and it used to be like a Mexican restaurant, but it's just now just colorful seating. So don't read too much into that other than the fact that there's more seating there. Now, I mentioned that Izumi is in a different location on the ship. Here, you're going to find it on deck 11 in the back. And Izumi is, of course, the Japanese specialty restaurant. This does cost extra to eat here. And this is where you're going to find plenty of sushi options for you. Izumi has an additional cost you pay per item. So unlike Samba Grill, in which you paid a cover charge and all of it was included, here you pay for what you order. So this has a double-edged sword to it. On the one hand, if you just want to stop in and get one roll and a miso soup, you can do that. But if you want to go to town, well, you can do that as well. It's going to cost you a little bit more. You're also going to find an art gallery outside the Wind Jammer on Deck 11. And this is an area where you can preview the art for the art auction later on the cruise. All Royal Caribbean cruise ships have art auctions. I don't recommend them, but it's kind of fun to look at, especially when people go to the restroom, you got a minute to kill. All right, let's head to the Vitality Spa on the forward part of Deck 11. And this is the spa that's on this particular Royal Caribbean cruise ship. The Vitality Spa costs extra and it includes both a salon and massage services. So you're gonna find a variety of services offered in the Vitality Spa, whether we're talking about getting your hair done, a mani, a pedi, or just going to get a sweetest massage, hot stone massage, variety of other services offered here. Each of them, of course, does cost extra. You can pre-book it before your cruise or once on board. My advice is pre-book it before your cruise to get that perfect time because inevitably you're going to find that while the Vitality Spa offers, you know, lots of options in terms of what you can do, timing can be an issue because a lot of times the best times are booked up beforehand and you know maybe it's not a big deal for you to have a spa massage during dinner time or at like 7 30 a.m but for other people they prefer it at a more convenient time so your best bet is to book it in advance you're also going to know that there's actually in the vitality spa there's a thermal spa those are those heated seats that you saw earlier that's the day pass you can purchase on board there's also the fitness center on 
the ratings of the seas and you know it's pretty impressive the scale and the amount of options that you have with this gym here on a cruise ship i think a lot of people including myself always assume well the gym's got to be like kind of one of those ratty gyms i'm using air quotes here that you find at like a holiday inn that's like a closet that has like one weight machine and an exercise bike there's a lot to do here so if you're looking to stay fit burn off some of those calories or maybe you just want to get swole well this is all available to you on the vitality spot and the vitality spot costs nothing extra to use by the way there are fitness classes those can cost extra but other than that everything else is included we're gonna head to the cascades dining room which is the main dining room on radiance of the seas the main dining room on radiance is the two deck dining room and this is where you can go for dinner every night of your cruise on a roller carpet you have two choices traditional or my time traditional is when you have the same dining time the same table same table mates and the same wait staff every night of the cruise the good thing is everything's all set for you it's always predictable same time same day etc but the problem with it is it's always at the same time which is either going to be early like around 5 30 or late eight o'clock which for some people is an issue but also my time dining which allows more flexible timing in which you can have different times. You have to make reservations for it or wait in line for a table there. The advantage is you have more flexibility. The main dining room is open for breakfast uh, every day of the cruise and lunch on sea days only. But the great thing about the main dining room is it is a staple of cruising. I mean, you have a lot of variety of food, not as much as in the Windjammer as we saw earlier, but certainly enough, to, I think, for most palates and the service that you get here, really. It is table service. You've got great wait staff. They really go above and beyond. I love dinner in the main dining room. It's a nice way to enjoy a meal together. And depending on your cruising group and who's with you, it's also a great way to kind of catch up and a more relaxed pace. Certainly the main dining room is included with your cruise. There's no additional cost to dine here. So in terms of eating on a cruise ship, you'll find plenty of food in the main dining room for all your meals. Next up is the Centrum. The Centrum is the main area of the cruise ship. Kind of think of it kind of like the hub of Radiance of the Sea. So on the bigger ships, you'll find a Royal Promenade, but here on Radiance of the Seas, you have a Centrum. And a Centrum is a concept in which instead of having a long hall, if you will, of stuff, this is more a vertical thing. So really in the middle of the ship, there is this enormous circular area in which whether you're on deck four or deck seven or deck 10, you can see down and see what's happening in here. It's kind of a hub of activity. And you're going to find different events, live music, dancing, and plenty of seating all around. If you want to be part of the action, you go down to the bottom. Otherwise, enjoy the views from one of the other decks. Guest services is available on deck four in the centrum as well. This is where you go if you have any issues on board the ship. You want to change something. You have a question, a billing issue. Really, it is your go-to spot for questions on board. You also find the shore excursion desk nearby the explorations desk if you need to book a shore excursion. There's a photo studio on the Radiance of the Seas. And the photo studio is really the spot to go to to get a professional photo shoot done. So there are photographers around the ship that you can go to during the course of your cruise, but if you want to have a private sitting, this is where you can get it. Cafe Latitudes is the cafe on board where you can get your favorite kind of coffee, espresso or latte. Cafe Latitudes is the equivalent, if you will, of Cafe Promenade and some other Royal Caribbean cruise ships if you're familiar with that one. Essentially everything here costs money and you can go here to get specialty coffees and teas. They also have some snacks and the snacks actually be complimentary, but the coffees themselves do cost extra. You have the option of purchasing them a la carte. If you have a Royal Caribbean drink package, they work here as well. Also Royal Caribbean sells a coffee card in which you can get a fixed amount of drinks during your cruise, which is kind of a nice option for people who just want coffee. And hey, at the end of the day, if you need a latte or a macchiato, this is the place to go for it. And there's also some little bit of seating off to the side in which you can view outside in fact the radiance class in general has a lot of views outside as you'll notice throughout this tour the next cruise office is available on board on deck five in the centrum area and next cruise is where you can go to book another royal caribbean cruise there are two good reasons to book a cruise while on board number one you get reduced deposit number two you get extra onboard credit for booking a cruise the price is the same whether you book it on board or back at home the difference is that you're going to get some extra onboard credit and reduced deposit. So if you're on board the cruise, having a great time and thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be great to book another cruise then head to next cruise to book another sailing. But if you're watching this video at home and think, boy, wouldn't it be great to book another cruise then do it now. Don't wait because the price could go up. There's also a internet cafe, believe it or not on the radiance of the seas. The this is kind of a throwback. I'm sure at some point this will get replaced by something at some point down the line, but hey, they still have it over here. Champagne bar is where you can go to enjoy one of many places, a cocktail on board the Radiance of the Seas. The Champagne bar has sweeping views outside, and it's a bar that has both 
the option to see what's happening in the center room as well as happening outdoors i mean the radiance class is a lot of glass that's a common theme around the ship royal Caribbean designed this ship to offer plenty of viewing opportunities outside the vessel which is like one of one million reasons why this is a great ship to take to alaska because of all the views you get out here it's a relaxing spot and for a lot of people they also like getting wine and of course well champagne let's head to casino royale where you can try your luck at some gambling whether you're a fan of the slots or blackjack or craps table there's plenty to enjoy here maybe you'll meet somebody whose nickname is sugar and he'll take you all the way to the promised land with lots of winnings or you'll just have a good time at the blackjack table hopefully win some money and if you do remember your good friends here at real Caribbean block <laughs> but good luck with the casino royale it could be a fun endeavor of course casino costs extra as you might imagine but it's a fun day nonetheless there's also the business services area which is kind of like the internet cafe we talked about earlier essentially you can go here not only get internet access but also to print things out or if you have any issues with the internet you can go here my advice when it comes to using the internet in general is bring your own device don't rely on real caribbeans the explorer's court is an area of the centrum and it's basically a seating area I, it's hard to describe because i'm not even clear what this area is or was but from what i can tell it's a spot to go sit and enjoy what's happening in the centrum you also find a library on the ratings of the seas and the library is where you can go to borrow a book and read it during the course of the cruise there isn't a ton of selections here but just enough of random books whether they be fiction or non-fiction to enjoy so if you need something else to read because you forgot something or ran out of stuff to read this is a good spot it's also a quiet area to go to and you'll notice there's also tables here where you can play maybe a quiet board game as well speaking of quiet board games the seven hearts room the card room is where you can go dedicated to play card games and whatnot the idea here is that there are tables and seating for card games and board games so if you bring your own board game here this is the place ratings does provide some board games for you to use they're very much used but if you'd like to bring your own this would be the spot to go enjoy it at the very top of the centrum is the loyalty desk this is an area with probably the best views of any spot on the ship but this is where you can go to enjoy some views of not only ship but also talk to the loyalty ambassador on board the loyalty ambassador can help you with any kind of issues you have related to crown and anchor society if you have a question about your benefits or something's not exactly as you expected it you can go here to talk to the loyalty ambassador all about that and yes there's some amazing views because it is situated on the top of the centrum which is incredible because the views there are really cool in general it's a pretty quiet area and i don't think the loyalty ambassador will mind if you just sit down here and enjoy the spot and of course all around the centrum you're going to find elevator lobbies that take you all the way around one of the best elevators are these glass elevators again i talked about the fact there's a lot of glass on here and it's just cool because you get to see what's outside of the ship almost at every single time no matter where you are even in an elevator which is usually enclosed while the forward elevators don't have any views the centrum elevators do have these views and in general while it may not be as grand as the royal promenade i still like a lot of what they offer in the centrum let's head to the schooner bar and i'm going to go on record by saying that the schooner bar on the radiance class cruise ships is the best schooner bar in the fleet there i said it but i really love this space it's just the right size really big lots of seating lots of great views you've got during the daytime different events in here like trivia and at night you'll have a piano player that comes by to sing and, and dance and you can all the kind of music that you enjoy there's a great bar that has circular seating all around it little nooks and crannies and booths you can sit in i really love schooner bar on radiance class ships like here on radiance and seas when i go on other royal Caribbean cruise ships larger ships i generally don't gravitate towards the schooner bar but there's something about the schooner bar here on radiance of the seas that really draws me to it so i really enjoy it quite a bit the colony club is another multi-use venue at the back of the ship so you can go past the schooner bar you'll find the colony club and the colony club is used for a variety of different events it's a really large space first of all you're going to find some of the self-leveling pool tables now theoretically these pool tables run on a gyroscope so that no matter what's happening with the ocean the table is always stable i say theoretically because in practice i'm not sure these are actually activated anymore or work anymore but they're there theoretically they can do that but the colony club is really about all the space they provide for different events they'll do bingo here they will do karaoke back here along with different trivia events and a variety of other activities so and a lot of times this is like an extension if you will for an area to go hang out in and as well as enjoy an event really this is kind of like a star lounge you might find on some of the voyager 
Freedom Class cruise ships. But here, it's just a really large venue. There are bars that are sometimes open, emphasis on sometimes, because more often than not, they're not. But what's really cool about the Colony Club is if you're looking for an indoor, quiet space away from it all, this could be a really good spot because it's on the back of the ship. So it's kind of like a poor man's 270 if you know about the Quantum Class cruise ships. It's kind of like that over here and really, really nice. So I enjoy going out here. If you're interested in a really in-depth dining experience, then the chef's table is for you. This is where you'll find the chef's table on the back of the ship as well. Chef's table is a curated meal in which the meal is not mass prepared like you would find in other restaurants, but made just for the people that are dining here. It's a multi-course meal with paired wines. If you're a foodie, if you really like enjoy that aspect of dining and are not picky, Chef's Table can be a great option for you. Speaking of specialty restaurants, you'll also find the Chops Grill. Chops Grill is the Royal Caribbean signature steakhouse in which you can get all sorts of cooked meats, primarily steaks here to enjoy. They also serve chicken and lamb and salmon, but really I think everyone's here for the steak and it delivers on that. Chops Grill has an additional cover charge in which you pay for one fee and you can enjoy all the food at Chops Grill. There's also some great side dishes, by the way. Next door is Giovanni's Table. Giovanni's Table is the classic Italian restaurant that Royal Caribbean developed. Giovanni's Table is the first iteration of Giovanni's Table. If you're familiar with Royal Caribbean, they've kind of evolved this restaurant a couple different times, but this is still the original version of it. And it is basically your checkerboard Italian food, lasagnas and pastas and breads and lots of appetizers to enjoy, just like Chops Grill. It is a cover charge to dine here and everything then is included with it. And I gotta say, if you're eating for dinner here, I think the steak at Giovanni's is actually better than the steak at Chops. You know, let me know in the comments below what you think about that, but I'm gonna go off on a limb and say that. But two major specialty restaurants available all nearby. And that's what really makes this whole area of the ship kind of interesting and that it's all kind of tucked away there. You'll also find the Aurora Theater on Radiance of the Seas. This is the main theater in which you'll find nightly entertainment in the theater. Usually the theater is only open in the evenings, so maybe sometimes in the afternoon they'll do like bingo or something in here, but primarily each evening there'll be some sort of entertainment. They don't have a full Broadway show on Radiance of the Seas, but they do have different kind of entertainers. Maybe it is a song and dance group. Maybe it is a pianist. Maybe it's a comedian. Maybe it's a magician. But every night there's something different happening in here, so check your cruise compass for a variety of activities. And the best part is all the entertainment in the Royal Theater here in the Aurora Theater is included with your cruise fare. And it's a really pretty spot. I really like the design of these theaters. It's not just, oh, let's put a stage here. They really made it look like a, a theater you'd actually go to on land. It's really pretty. You'll also find on Ratings of the Seas an actual movie theater. Yeah, there's the cinema Deck 6 Midship. So depending on your cruise, they'll have recently run movies that'll be shown here throughout the day. Unlike other classes of Royal Caribbean cruise ships, this is actually a movie theater, not just movies by the pool deck, but seating in the stadium style with a large screen and an enclosed environment so the sound is perfect so this is where you can go to enjoy a movie during your cruise like i said there'll be probably three or four different show times throughout the day every day of your cruise and the movie selections do change from sailing to sailing they tend to be movies that are basically just out of theaters so it kind of be a fun thing to do the quill and compass pub is the english style pub on radiance of the seas it's a little hard to find. A lot of people overlook this because it's between the casino and the back, the front of the ship, I should say. But what's really cool about the pub is I love the guitarist that plays here in the evening. People also go here for some of the sporting events because there's a lot of televisions. But I go here for the live music, my favorite drink, and being able to sing along to the bar songs you typically know. It's a great spot, and you'll find it very, very popular on most cruises because a lot of people like that live music element. It's something that makes Royal Caribbean really stand out from the competition. So. Come out here, have a drink, and enjoy the evening entertainment at the Quill and Compass, because whether you're going here or the Schooner Bar in the evenings, you're gonna find a lot of other people singing along to those kinds of songs. Heading out of the pub, there's also some more seating, and people kind of sit out there, kind of enjoy a quieter spot. But we're gonna head up to Deck 5 Midship now for the Art and Photo Gallery. So, as I mentioned, there is an art auction on board, and you can preview more of the art in this particular area. Again, this art will be auctioned off later on the cruise if you'd like to partake in that. There's no obligation to go to the art auction, but of course, if you bid, well, <laughs> your bid is binding, and so you'll be on the hook for that. But if you're looking to get a photo on board, this is where you can view the photo. So throughout the cruise, there'll be opportunities to take a photo with the ship's photographers. And these photos, by the way, there's no obligation. You don't have to buy any of these photos, but when you want to see what they look like, you can go here and preview them, and basically you just go through the walls and look for like, you know, the area like day one boarding or day three main dining room, because you remember that you took a photo on those days. 
find your photo. And if you like them, you can go buy them. Otherwise, just put them back on the rack and they're good to go. There's a conference center on Radiance of the Seas. And if you're not with a group, like as in a formal group, then there's probably no reason for you to ever come here. But if you're ever on a group sailing because your company's doing something or a trade group or an event, well, then it might be here in the conference room and it looks like a conference room. There's a couple different conference rooms within the conference center. Uh, this is as much as I can say about a conference center. <laughs> Next up is the Shops of the Centrum. So while there isn't a real promenade of shops, there isn't a shopping district. And this is a series of shops in which you can go to to purchase various souvenirs. Of course, all these souvenirs and shops cost extra, but whether you're looking to get a t-shirt that says Radiance of the Seas or pick up some jewelry, perhaps some liquor or any other souvenir from your cruise, this is where you can go to purchase it. All purchases are done via the C-Pass cars. They'll be charged for it later after the cruise, but you can pick up a variety of elements here. And the shops are open pretty much while the ship is out of port. So when you're at sea, this will be open for you and you can go here to pick up these items. And for a lot of people, this is a good, you know, shopping area, whether you're just window shopping or you're actually looking to purchase something, you can pick up a variety of different options here. If you do buy liquor, by the way, the liquor will be delivered to your room on the last day of the cruise. So if your goal is, hey, let's go buy a bottle of vodka and then have it for the rest of the cruise, it doesn't quite work that way, but you'll have it, be able to take home. And there's a variety of it and it's all duty free. You'll also find in the shopping area, some events during the daytime, there could be little shopping events where they're offering discounts or BOGO deals. So keep an eye out for those. Heading outside, here's the promenade deck. The promenade deck is the wraparound deck that goes all the way around the ship. And this is another viewing opportunity on deck five that you could enjoy. The lifeboats are here, but don't worry about that because you're really looking out everything around here. So this is the outside promenade deck. There is seating in some areas for you to enjoy or go right to the railing and get a full look at everything around you. It's really impressive. And I like this it's a very relaxed spot. A lot of people will take like books out here in the afternoon to read and there's so a obviously a breeze out here, and it can be a nice spot to enjoy. It's also the pathway to one of my favorite hidden secrets about the Radiance class, which is the helipad. Yeah, the helicopter pad is all the way forward. So if you go to the promenade deck and just walk forward, you will literally run into the helipad, which you're allowed to go on and be able to enjoy sweeping views all around you. This is my favorite sail away spot on Radiance of the Seas. If you go all the way to the front, you can actually do your I'm the king of the world pose. But otherwise, it's really nice to be able to enjoy views all around you with a lot less stuff to block the view. It's a go-to spot. I recommend going out here as many times as you can, whether you're at sea or in port or sailing away, because it is really, really nice. All right, back inside, warming up in the elevator. Let's head up to deck 12. We're gonna check out Adventure Ocean. Adventure Ocean is the complimentary children's program, and that's right, it's included with your cruise fare. And Adventure Ocean is where you can go to drop kids off between the ages of three and, well, 17 years old to enjoy supervised programming for the kids. The kids are divided up by age. There's different groups. There's explorers and voyagers and aquanauts and the teen club. And the idea is that the programming is catering towards a specific group. That way the three-year-olds aren't hanging out with the 11-year-olds necessarily, right? And basically on the first day of your cruise, you can go to Adventure Ocean, sign your kids up. It's free to do that. And then later on, there are set hours that you can bring your kids to it. Adventure Ocean is complimentary all the way up until 10 p.m. At 10 p.m., then you're just gonna pay an additional fee later on. There's also the Royal Babies and Tots. The nursery is for kids that are under the age of three. And the nursery does cost extra, but let me tell you, as a parent, it's the best money you ever spent on your cruise because you can drop them off and they take care of them. They can put it down for a nap, even feed the kids. You also find the Optics, which is the teen club on board. So if you have older kids, they can go here, hang out, play video games, meet other teens, socialize. It's a little less structured than proper Adventure Ocean, but there's plenty for the teens to enjoy. And this is a dedicated area just for them. And for a lot of teens, they enjoy being able to meet other kids on board, hang out with them, maybe form a friendship and a bond for life, or just somebody to hang out with during the cruise, you never know. But this is a space for them. Next up, we're gonna head all the way upstairs. We're gonna take the stairs this time to head up to deck 13, the Star Quest, which is a really fancy term for the Viking Crown Lounge. This is the lounge on the top of the ship that has really great views from above. So we've talked about other places that have been lower, but this is the highest vantage point with views and there's a bar up here to enjoy. So the great thing is no matter what the weather is, hot, cold, rainy, snowy, you have the opportunity to be in here, enjoy the views and have a great vantage point without having to be subjugated to the outside weather conditions. And the Star Quest itself is a bar area. This is where you'll find in the evenings, really the late night, the party zone, there'll be a DJ up here and the bar here actually spins very slowly, but you'll notice it's actually spinning and it's a cool little feature. I mean, it's a gimmick, but I'm a sucker for a spinning bar. I love it. So you sit down and the bar spins while the center does not. So the bartenders stay positioned where they are and you're 
bar slowly moves around you. It's kind of a cool thing to do. I'm a sucker for it. I enjoy it. And again, in the evening times, you get up here and there's more of a dance party. And in the daytime, there can be other events that are happening as well. You'll also find the Sweet Lounge on Deck 13. If you're in a grand suite or higher, sorry, Junior Sweet Guests, you're allowed to use the Sweet Lounge. Sweet Lounge is a dedicated area, not just for Sweet Guests, but also for Sweet Guests to enjoy different amenities. Each evening, there's free alcohol served in here. And during the daytime and evening, there'll be hors d'oeuvres and various finger foods to enjoy. There's also a complimentary coffee machine in which you can get coffee throughout the day. And that's included with your cruise fare. But for a lot of people who stay in a suite, the concierge lounge is a really important spot because, well, there's free food and free drinks, more importantly, that you can enjoy. And yes, it is unlimited in the suite lounge. There's an outdoor section to the suite lounge as well. So if it's a little busy in there, or you want some fresh air or both, you can go outside and enjoy the views and the wind out there. And next door to the suite lounge is the Diamond Club. The Diamond Club is a reserved area just for guests who are diamond or above in Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society. So this is an area dedicated just for them. And kind of like the Sweet Lounge, there is different finger foods available throughout the day. And there's also bar service available in the Diamond Lounge, of course, subject to the Diamond Drink vouchers that Diamond guests get. This is for Diamond, Diamond Plus, and Pinnacle Club guests in Royal Caribbean's Crown and Anchor Society. There's also the complimentary coffee machine as well that I mentioned earlier. They have in the Sweet Lounge. They also have it in the Diamond Lounge. And again, great views out here and enough seating certainly for most times of the day. So really, when you're up on the top pool deck of Radiance of the Seas, you've got some amazing views, and it just goes on and on and on. And of course, you've also got cabins. We didn't talk about the cabins that you'll find on Radiance of the Seas. Cabins are available on a variety of different decks, whether you book an inside, a balcony, a suite, an ocean view. There's lots of different choices at different prices for you. And, you know, they come in different configurations. Here's an inside room with bed split. The beds can be put together if you like. It's up to you. And you can ask your stateroom attendant to change that at any different time of the day. But really, when you book a cabin on a Royal Caribbean cruise, you're getting at the very heart of it, no matter what kind you're getting. You're getting a bed, you're going to get a sitting area, you're going to get a private bathroom, and you're going to get a television, a safe, and that's pretty much in a closet area, some places to put your stuff, right? That's pretty much the core of any room. Now, certainly with the larger rooms, move to a balcony or suite, there's a lot more space for you than what you see here in this inside room. And in addition to that, if you're in a balcony or suite, then you probably also have a private balcony. But here is an inside room, and you know what? This is just enough because you're on a cruise ship. There's lots happening around you, whether it's on board the ship or on shore. How much time will you be spending here, right? So at the end of the day, it can be really worthwhile to just save that money on a cabin and spend it elsewhere on the ship. But other people will say, Matt, I love having my home away from home in my cabin. So I get a nicer room, private balcony. So think on your, on your budget and what you can afford and what your preferences are. There can be a right room just for you on Radiance of the Seas. Well, there you have it. A look at Radiance of the Seas, a classic Royal Caribbean cruise ship of the Radiance class. I love going on the Radiance class. And I hope you found this video helpful and this tour insightful. So that way, when you go on Radiance of the Seas, you know exactly where everything is. If you found this video helpful, if you liked it, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. And we'll talk again real soon.